DaVinci Resolve 18.6 is here, free and studio updates available right now. And this isn't a beta, it's actually a full live release. So you can either go directly to the Blackmagic website to download it from there, or simply open up your version of DaVinci Resolve, click on DaVinci Resolve top left, check for updates, the update should appear, and then you can just download it and install it directly from there. But what exactly is new? Well, nothing too amazing in this one. This isn't a big giant update like DaVinci Resolve 18.5 was. This is more of an incremental update, just giving you some handy new features, some nice quality of life stuff, and some other bits and bobs. So in this video, we're just gonna run through it. I'm gonna give you a real quick tour of some of these new features and show you what's what. Now this actually came thanks to the Black Magic update. There was a big live update thing yesterday. I've done a separate video on that, which I've linked down below if you wanna know more about some of the other stuff that they announced. But hey, so what is new? Well, the big thing, the big main thing they're really touting at the moment is Black Magic Cloud storage. So Blackmagic Cloud has been with us for a little while and that allows you to store your projects within the cloud so then you can access your DaVinci Resolve projects from any system connected to the internet. I'm actually a big fan because I jump around from this PC to my laptops quite a lot so I've been using the cloud service and I really really like it but the issue was you had to have a separate storage solution for all of your media. Now it's all built in thanks to Blackmagic Cloud Storage. Winner! If we head over to cloud.blackmagicdesign.com, you can see we have this new cloud storage option. We're gonna give that a click. You do need to have a Blackmagic Cloud account, but that's totally free to sign up to, so you can just sign up to one of those. We'll hit continue, and this is where we configure how much storage you want. So two gigabytes is free. You get two gigabytes of storage. You don't have any project library, so you will then need to add a project library as well, which are priced at $5 per month. Now, we've got a little slider. If we knock this up, the cheapest option after that, the one I'm gonna go with, 500 gigabytes of data, one project library, 20 presentations, and you can have up to 30 members. And that's $15 per month. Now, if we jump up one, the next storage available is two terabytes, and that jumps up to $60. This is a little bit of a missed opportunity, in my opinion. I'd have loved to see a one terabyte option for like 30 bucks. That seems like an obvious choice. That's much more like mid-range. I would probably go for the one terabyte option if it was available. 60 bucks is more than I really need. I don't need two terabytes. 500 gig is probably on the low side, but I'll be able to make that work. But I don't wanna spend 60, so I'll spend the 15. If there was a middle ground for like 25, 30 for one terabyte, that would probably be a really nice solution for the vast majority of people. When you actually open up the cloud storage area within the DaVinci Resolve project manager and start a new project, there's this new splash screen. So we name our project, we choose a location for the project media, we can choose to share the project with multiple users, sync it with storage, and allow remote camera access. You'll also notice that you can set to automatically sync your media, then you can sync proxies. So you can sync the proxies and the original or just the proxies only to make sure that you're not using tons and tons of your precious cloud storage. Next up, we have the ability to assign and apply favorite keywords to clips and markers. Now, loads of people that are either come from Final Cut or are looking to move over from Final Cut have been asking for something like this for some time. In Final Cut, you can essentially really quickly mark specific sections of your clips and then add them to a favorite. So you can just go through all of your footage, marking out your favorite. So when it actually comes to edit, you've got all of the bits ready to go. Now Blackmagic have added this, but it's not quite as streamlined as it potentially could be. Let me show you really quickly how it works. So the first thing you're gonna to want to do is open up your media pool, click on these little three dots and make sure that you have the show smart bins enabled so you can see your smart bins down here. Then also go to DaVinci Resolve top left, preferences, user, editing, and make sure you have the automatic smart bins for keywords enabled. Now I'm gonna open up a piece of footage here, and if I'm marking in and out, I can then right click, and we can convert this in and out to a duration marker, which puts a little marker on there. And if we open this up, we can now add keywords. Now we can use favorites. So let me just go to workspace and there is a keyword manager. 
And now within here, we have these favorite keywords. You can see I've already made one called Mr. Alex Tech. Let me do another one just called Demo. And then if we hit Close, now on this little marker here, we can put Mr. Alex Tech within there. Done. Now within my Smart Bin, we now have Mr. Alex Tech as a keyword. And anything which I tag with that Mr. Alex Tech is now marked so I can really quickly drag that section onto my timeline. Now you can also assign keyboard shortcuts to these favorite keywords. So if we go to DaVinci Resolve, go to Keyboard Customization, and then within here, just search for favorite keywords. And you can see we have favorite keyword one. I've assigned that to Alt and A, keyboard two, three, four, five, six, all the way down to nine. So you can build up all of these different keywords and then assign the keywords, have this automatic smart bin to us filter them out essentially. And the issue is you can't just do a single keyboard shortcut. You've got to do an in and out and then convert it to a marker and then open up the modify marker, click a within the keywords to then assign the keyword. So it's currently still a multi-step process. Hopefully that becomes a little more streamlined in the future. Next, GIFs. Way GIFs. I know lots of people have been asking for this, GIFs. We could generate GIFs in 18.5, but we still couldn't import them into DaVinci Resolve. Now you can. So I've got a GIF here. If I just quickly grab it, drag it into DaVinci Resolve, we now have a Giphy.gif, and I can put that straight on my timeline, and there we go, we have a GIF. Now, there is a bit of an issue with them at the moment is they just play through once, they don't loop, so you will then have to duplicate it and do some stuff like that. However, I believe our good friend Patrick Sterling is working on a little Fusion Effect plugin thing which will fix that for you so then you can just make them whatever length you like good old patrick if he's finished that i'll put that down in the comments section below next support for outer text stroke in titles and subtitles this works for text plus the regular text as well i believe and subtitles let me show you really quickly how you do it on text plus so i'm just going to grab a text plus we'll put this on the timeline if we go to shading They've also tidied up shading, so it's much nicer now. All these folders are actually closed, which just looks nicer and is a bit easier to use. And if we go to appearance and click this second icon to enable our outline, our stroke, we can increase that and decrease that. There's now a tick box to do outside only. If we grab a standard text, scroll down, we've got stroke, we can increase that. There's also an outside only there. And the exact same thing applies for subtitles. Now, sticking with subtitles, you can also now change the case of your subtitles. So you can have uppercase, lowercase, mixed case, all that sort of stuff, which again, handy to have. You couldn't do it before you were set with whatever DaVinci Resolve wanted to do. Now you can just change it on the fly. This is a good, simple quality of life one, but adding an effect to a clip changes automatically to the effects tab within the inspector, which just saves you a couple of extra clicks. I like this, it just saves me a little bit of time. So as you can see in the inspector, I have the transform tools open at the moment. If I go to effects within the effects library, let's just grab binoculars, shove it on there. We now are directly on the effects tab. Simple, I know, but it just means you don't have to then open the inspector and then go to effects. Next up, playhead position is restored when undoing edit actions. Again, I know another simple one, quality of life, but it is quite handy to have. And it basically means this. I'm gonna do a couple of cuts here, moving my playhead along as we go. Now, if I undo those, my playhead is gonna jump back to where those cuts happened. Previously, my playhead would have stayed here. Those cuts would have uncut themselves. My playhead would have still been here and then I'd have to manually move it back. So now it just does it all for you. In DaVinci Resolve 18.5, they changed the default retime curve to actually be retime curve rather than retime frame. Now, this was a good thing for me and a lot of other people because we prefer to use the curve rather than the retime frame. However, it clearly rubs some people up the wrong way. You prefer to use it the other way. So now they've tried to please everyone and I think they have managed by giving you access to both curves. So on this clip, if I right click and we're gonna go to the retime curve, you can see now we have two lines. This one here is our retime speed, our standard retime curve. And then down here we have retime frame. So whichever way you prefer to do it, you can do them both at the same time, just jumping between the two, simple. There's now a media pool column and a smart bin filter for transcription status. So if you're on DaVinci Resolve 
studio, you have access to these audio transcriptions. Previously, there was no way to know whether you'd run a transcription on a clip without actually running it again and seeing whether it spends ages doing it or just shows you the text. Now, there's a column which tells you if you have. It's actually off by default, I believe. So all you need to do, open up your media pool, right click, column heading, and then you get all of these different options. Come down, you can see one now called transcription status. Give that a tick. And now you can see that this clip here has already been transcribed. So I don't need to worry about transcribing it again. I can just jump in and see all me text. All me text. If you've followed my channel for a while, you know that I'm a big fan of exporting bins and using them as kind of templates and that sort of stuff. They've extended that functionality because you can now import and export power bins as DRB files. So within my media pool, I've got my power bin here. If I right click, I can export this bin, which we couldn't do before. This is actually really handy because I have had some comments in the past saying that they had a power bin all set up and then they did something and lost the power bin. Now, if you've got one set up, you can export it, back it up. That won't export the actual media within it, it's just the links to that media. So it will be a tiny file. You can export those bins, store them somewhere. So if something does go wrong, you can just re-import them back into DaVinci Resolve and you're good to go. Now we're going to jump talking about exports over on the Deliver page because actually there's a few different updates they've done here, which all of them are really quite useful. So number one, support for target audio loudness standards on render. So on the Deliver page, there is now an option to set a loudness standard. So I'm here on the Deliver page. If I just go to the Audio tab and then scroll down to this Audio Normalization, tick the box, and then I go to the Mode. There's a bunch of different modes in here for like Netflix and Disney. And there's one for YouTube, which just sets the target level and the target loudness correctly. Sweet! Next up, they've added the ability to import and export render presets. So I have a preset that's all set up for these YouTube videos, so I can just click it and then render the video and I know the quality is gonna be good. I know that my loudness is gonna be good because I'm gonna add that to my render preset. You now have the ability to export and import those, which is really useful if you're moving from one machine to the next, you can take these presets with you, but it also means you can share them with others. So if I wanted to, I could make mine available to you guys to download which I may just do. I'll probably do a separate video talking about all the render settings and I'll make mine available if it's useful for you guys to use as well. So let me show you how that works. Dead easy. So let's say that this is my current preset and I want to save this. I click on the three little dots at the top. I'm going to save as a new preset. Just call this demo. And then on the far left, we have all of mine that I've already created. My Ultra HD 30 YouTube is my standard one. But if I go to this demo, we click on the three little dots once again, and there is an option under demo to export the preset. We save that, send it to wherever we want, and then they just repeat the same process, but instead going to import preset, and they can import it directly back in. Simple. And last but not least, on the deliver page, you can now, it's not really on the deliver page actually, you can now actually send your timelines directly to the render queue from the edit page. So if you've got these presets set up, which I highly recommend that you do anyway, it's now even easier to send them to the render queue. So I'm back on the edit page. I'm gonna to go to my timeline smart bin, which again, I highly recommend that you set up. I've linked a video down below, which shows you how to do just that. And I've got the project timeline. If I right click, go to timelines, there's an option now to add to render queue using, and then it will pull through all of my presets. So let's use the one called demo, which I created a moment ago. It's going to prompt to say, where do you want to save this? So I'm just going to dump it there for now. And then if we jump over to the deliver page, it's there waiting in my render queue. Now, the cool thing with this, let me highlight both these two timelines that I have here. Right click, timelines, render, demo, set the folder, jump over. And now we have three. So you can highlight multiple timelines from the edit page, use a preset, they'll jump onto your render queue, so then you just jump onto the deliver page and then you can render them all out. Simple. Simple indeed. Now Fusion has had a bit of an update. They've now added support for Fusion USD scenes with materials and volumes. So if you've been enjoying these USD formats they added previously, you can now do more with them. And they've added the ability to extrude and bevel 
3D shapes, which means you can turn a flat PNG of logo thing into a nice 3D looking logo. Casey Farris, a good friend Casey Farris, has already made a video showing you exactly how to do that. So once again, I've linked that down below to go check out if you want to. Now there's no big major improvements anywhere on the Fairlight page or the color page. There's no new effects, no new magic masks or anything too exciting there. So we'll skip over that. So the very last few things I want to mention, there's now support for the Apple Log video formats within DaVinci Resolve. So if you are looking to pick up one of these new fancy iPhones they just announced, which will shoot in log, you can import that into DaVinci Resolve, which is kind of cool. And there is now up to two times faster neural engine performance with the NVIDIA Tensor RT. So if you're using an NVIDIA GPU, you should have faster neural engine performance. Neural engine is the AI stuff. So things like depth map, magic masks, face refinement, all that sort of stuff. They've also added now four times faster neural engine performance on modern AMD GPUs. So if you're using an AMD GPU, there's not been much love for AMD GPUs in DaVinci Resolve for quite some time. Now there is, you get four times faster performance. So winner, chicken, dinner, all that sort of fun stuff. There you go. That's a whistle stop tour. Not really that fast, was it? It's like 30 minutes. That was quite a long tour of some of the new updates they've brought to DaVinci Resolve 18.6. I'm going to delve slightly deeper into a few of them in some separate videos, but I wanted to jump on, give you a quick overview tour thingy. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you're looking forward to more DaVinci Resolve goodness. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. I'll see you next time.